Good day, everybody. Welcome back to the Marvel Contest of Champions new show. Shocker and Sandman deep dives are out, and both champs look really good. Is reparrying becoming an issue for you when facing against enemy AI? We're looking to some reports from players on this one. Bandwave hit at the end of last week, and some players are asking for their accounts back. Fat chance. And what was the reason behind there being no live stream to announce the new content that was coming in April? Hello, everybody. Welcome to Monday. It's Monday's MCN. We got a few things to go over in this show today. Some really cool stuff. And with the negativity of Friday of last week behind us, I'm definitely going to be looking into new ways to grab revives and obviously share that with uh, the community uh, in some content, which then Kaban will nerf and then I'll have to look for new areas to get revives um, and other items that Kaban might ban from other pieces of content. Before then, having to do the same thing. And history repeats itself, of course it will. In any case, uh, with all sarcasm aside, let's get into the show for today. Let's begin now with AI reparrying. It's something that I've experienced personally in a few different areas, whether it be something like an arena or in Alliance War. Alliance War and competitive areas are more frustrating, and I definitely would say that it would be more frustrating for something like Battlegrounds. So Battlegrounds and um, War are two things that really require you to win, to win well, and not get slapped and clapped and lose so it's definitely annoying when that happens interesting to note when uh, you know other players have got similar experiences so as uh, Gogeta posts on Friday so I previously experienced the problem with Penny Parker Mordo but now in invade meta in BGs all the champs are triggering reparry it is really annoying and to, uh, to play like this one cannot even take advantage of the node without getting reparried and comboed into oblivion. I hardly made myself used uh, to AI uh, parrying immediately if I go to punish their special, but not this is beyond beyond annoying. Yeah, definitely annoying with them. Someone saying I experienced similar BG yesterday, hitting to Kitty Pride and Null's block and ended up being stunned. It's either you're being um, hit into block countered by special or hit into block countered by uh, parry, which is annoying. Uh, sometimes I've got parry two, same problem in Alliance Wars. Yeah, at least I'm not alone because I thought I was going mad when I'm like, I just got, how, how, was that, how does that happen? It's the same thing where I've been in a, in a block myself and I've parried on like the second medium mean hit into my block. Happened a few times on stream, which I've, I've, I've showcased. And it's definitely something that, you know, um, Kabam should, uh, should look into. Although, it, I don't know if Kabam's response would be like, well, which champion is it happening to? And they go, oh, this is an animation for a particular champion. No, it's uh, it's an animation for every single champion. So you need to fix every single champion. Uh, is going to be the response, I'd, I'd say, to Kabam on this one. Um, good luck to, dealing with that. No, uh, in all seriousness, hey there, the team is trying to look into these reports and any footage you could share of what you're seeing, along with info of what device uh, operating system version you're using, would be extremely helpful in these efforts. Yes, do bear in mind, everybody, You, we are all working for Kabam, and we have to record every single fight because it is important that uh, we fit, help fix the game. Apparently. Uh, any case, again, in all seriousness now, I think after Friday, like, it's fair game for people to kind of, like, to, to, to say um, funny things against them. But look, yeah, uh, annoying. If you are experiencing something, and you do have footage, because you might be one of these people that, that are so paranoid, like, like, I am now feeling paranoid about that you record every single fight. Yep, then, um, there you go. If you've got footage, put it into this thread in the link in the description down below. But remember, you've got to record every single fight. Because you've got to fix, you've got to fix the game. Do you know that you've got to fix the game? Not, 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 not Kabam. You, me, you, you got to fix the game. Fix the game. Okay, no more jokes and sarcasm aside. I, I do want to kind of like just kind of focus on stuff that's happening within the community. Uh, and and yeah, like there's some serious stuff going on and it's important stuff. And there's actually some fun stuff, which is great. So there might be a few questions from people as to like why there wasn't a live stream. I, I did cover this on, I think it was like Friday. Uh, but uh, yeah, the reason for this is largely down to the current situation. What might be seen is stuff like Twitch chats and some of the volatile things that I've been seeing and a lot of people have been seeing in various different types of uh, social media outlets of, um, you know, for, for the game, community places. So yeah, um, Kabam Jack says, we ended up cancelling today's live stream. We probably should have made a more public notification, but I'm uh, sure you've noticed there's a lot going on right now. Ultimately, we knew the content of the stream 
would have been shadowed by the current state of affairs and we felt it, it would be risky to do it in front of a live audience with the community in uh, fervor. So basically all the stuff with the revive farming kind of like stuff like uh, even even Kabam don't want to feel the heat, you know, don't uh, don't stoke the fires, don't light a fire if you can't take the heat. I don't know. Uh, anyway, um, we're glad some of you are enjoying the stream. I would have liked to have seen the stream, but I, I would I would have said that in the uh, comments of the of the live chat, you're gonna see people saying about this revive farming situation because it's not something that a large majority of the um, community agree with, especially for those that found out about 3.2.6 and revive farming um, elements, and also some of the justifications which come across very hypocritical. Um, from Kabam, honestly, so weird from that. Fr I'm, I'm trying to rem like just ignore that Friday thread, that Friday Friday post they did because it was just there's so many weird things just put in it. Anyway, that's why we're doing them, and don't worry, we'll be back in the swing of things soon. We're targeting mid-April for our next one. We're not ready to share the details yet, but uh, it's going to be huge. Uh, okay, good. Uh, I'm looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to that. Um, it will be nice for them to get back onto it. Uh, yeah, they're just gonna ride the um the, the negativity, ride out the neg negativity that came from the um uh apothecary and revive farming nerf situation and and stuff like that. But uh, eh. And now on to two new champions. First of all, Sandman, Sandman, and well, both both champions I really love. I'm really hyped for these two, and I really hope to get them in featured. Although I believe Shockers is the first champion in the featured six star which is annoying because it's like you have to wait longer for sandman sandman's mechanic and rotation is so cool you build up the resist you then look to throw an sp1 and then it's uh, down to doing a heavy attack and heavy attack has a root on it so you're able to like lock the champion in place as well which is really amazing uh, and just the extent of damage you can do with the champion whether or not you're throwing debuffs or kind of doing parry heavy not parry heavy but you're doing heavies whilst the champion is in root and doing tons of damage. You can opt for like an SP3 rotation to do some damage, and it just looks amazing. Like the, the way that you kind of have this um, kind of extent of damage. If you've got the Mantis synergy, you're able to get a Fury passive, so it just stacks the extent of damage like no end. I mean, look at this, just go. Like it, it depends how you want to take the champion SP3 method or SP1 method. It's going to be down to you, or like resist an SP1 method and heavy attack method, of course. But look at it, the damage was just amazing. And as I said, even with a Mantis synergy, like Shock, not Shocker, Sandman is just an absolute powerhouse because you get the um, a Fury passive, and it's like the SP3 goes in, which you can see on screen right now, and it's just like the damage you do is just like nice. Like you may want Mantis on your team quite nice, nice. Shock, on the other hand, is a pretty cool little champion. I say little, he's not, he's not a little. But yeah, as soon as you build up your charges, do you like an SP1 to quick SP1 kind of rotation and, and method. And then you do this, like, you do an SP2, which, like, does a, what seems to be like a massive stun. You then charge your heavy attack, which you can see there on screen right now. And then as soon as you get down to zero, it's boom and bang. And it's like 180 to 190k damage. Uh, the SP3 method of this is kind of like, well, it's, 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 it's similar. It just depends how you want to take down a champion. There's two methods. You get your energized, you do an SP1, you build up your charges, you do your thing like that. And the same thing kind of like... It's up to you, SP3 method, or it's um, the other method. Oh my god! Yeah, like both champions just look really good. It's a it's a striking time when I say that, like I think there's like champions are really good with what they what Kabam have done. Animation sick, abilities look really good. There's some probably some questions I'd have to ask about Sandman's immunities, but we'll go over that in a couple of videos later on today, because uh, we've got the, um, the the spotlights out later on. So I'm gonna like take some stuff from the videos and then have a look at the spotlights. I kind of look at stuff that I, I kind of like like or dislike. And to be honest, at this moment in time, it looks like I've got like more likes to dislikes when it comes to uh, these two new champions coming into the game, especially from damage potential um, and rotation, which just actually seem fun. So, well done, Kabam. And now on to cheating. Oh, yes, and cheating and bans. Uh, as we talked about a lot last week, uh, Kabam, we're going to do a lot of things when it comes to bans and uh, tackling those that cheat within the game. Uh, interesting to kind of find out, like, what happened at the tail end of last week or uh, April 1st, which, um, you know, 
Saturday. Uh, so continuing the thread of ad hoc updates on the battle against cheaters, here is another message straight from the game team. On Monday, we met as planned to review data for another incursion ban wave. Our initial cut identified around 1,500 likely cheaters. After review, we found a few accounts that have potentially legitimate runs and we had to narrow out criteria to make sure we didn't ban any innocent summoners. In the end, over 1,000 modders were permanently banned Wednesday evening. The goal next week is to review the remaining 500 accounts on this list as we suspect most but not all of them are also cheaters. So there's more bans to come this week. We also finalized a plan for those uh, those carried by cheaters, but implementation will take some time because we need to remove some rewards. That's the key thing, isn't it? Removal of rewards. And I don't, I still don't know whether or not Kabam actually do this uh, to say a lot of those counts that cheated in Battlegrounds and also, you know, got like rank rewards because people got rank rewards and cheated in Battlegrounds. More info on this will come after we implement these bans. I appreciate the transparency on this stuff from Kabam. On the Battlegrounds front, our bans continue daily. We've made significant progress towards further improvements to the system, but we are waiting to implement them. We are still planning to have at least one more noteworthy improvement in place before the end of the season. That's fantastic. It's funny because I saw like a message uh, or kind of like this this morning uh, where someone over the... Um, was it, was, it was yesterday, actually. I uh, was kind of like saying that they have been banned. Please unban me. Like, well, 500k account that did room 25 and got Conduit of Revenge. And I think that's an Abyss one there. That's, that's like that. No, 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 no. That's, that's, that's definitely funny. Definitely no. Ha, 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 ha. Um, and obviously some more bands went in over there. Uh, as I said, for me, like the main thing that I want to kind of point out with um, with the work that Kabam doing, uh, doing, especially in Battlegrounds, here is where it needs to be. I don't want to repeat myself constantly in every single MCM we cover Battlegrounds, but uh, an anti-cheat system will only be decent when it's implemented in two factors. Number one, the easiest thing that Kabam can do in the meantime is that when people have uh, been cheated on, that game, they get refunded their items, their Elder Marks, their Energy, and their Victory Shields, right? So that needs to be done. But the kind of lock and kind of finish point to this is the following, is that as soon as an anti-cheat detection system is in place, that if someone's cheated on round one, that then that picks up all those particular little algorithms, data and whatever. And the system is able to go, right, this person cheated on round one, they are banned. And when they are banned, they then give the win instantly to the other player. There could be arguments to say like, right, well, uh, the non-cheated player should then just have the items refunded to them. And then it's just kind of like whatever. But I don't, the thing is, I don't know how Kabam operate their game, whether or not they can either do well, it's a longer time for them to do rewards refund, but maybe it's easier for them to just go, look, we'll just give them the straight win to that particular player being cheated on so that it just means the process is more, you know, streamlined. It's it's quicker and that account is banned where well, the other player gets to go on with their life, gets to get the victory shield and gets to move on or get the medal and move on to the, um, to the next fight they want to do in that day. That for me is when this system of anti-cheat is thumbs up. But for the time being, it is just a system that just retro is it retrospectively or hinds in hindsight does banning. I can't remember what the word is. It it post in it's in post whatever it is to kind of like deal with it as opposed to not dealing with it head on and seeing that the player that being cheated on is losing out on so many different things. So I wish Kaban well in doing a solid for the community in getting that particular system mentioned where you tackle it right there and then when a player has been cheated on right. Um, at the point of round one and nothing about round two round three because at the end of the day it would just log um, a win for the uh, for the cheater could be saying by round two but you kind of think if you've got a decent system in place by round one it should have gone hey that was a large basic that was a large debuff dot damage that was a very stonking fury buff those stats were or that data or that damage that that champion did is incorrect about what any champion in game would do so that's where i kind of like um you know when that particular story it's good to say that uh, kabam are dealing with like anti-cheating it's just as i said like more work needs to be done to kind of like just give that um reassurance to the player base uh, on the fact and we end the monday show as we normally do by doing some arena results and predictions for mr nick fury and 
Miss Kate Bishop. So the results are as follows. Nick Fury went lower than expected, which is hopeful for the round two if you are thinking of going for a cheeky one. As 35.2 uh, mil got position 87. Thanks everyone, by the way, that posts in the Discord, uh, sends you messages, and as well the community tab, and on Twitter as well. This massively helps out, and uh, we're getting some great results recently. So thank you very much, everybody. So yeah, um, for 35 mil. Cut position 87. It might come close to about uh, 33, maybe, when it comes to the final results of that one. Uh, so six star Nick Fury was got for a lot lower than I thought was going to go, which is good in some ways. Over on to the five star, 389, 11 mil. So there's still going to be a lot lower on cutoff. Then Kate Bishop, we have got ourselves a 273 mil, position 59, 253 mil, position 100, and then 49 mil, position 416 for those that are interested in a five star version of the champion. And where are we going with our predictions when round two comes about? Well, I'm going with this Nick Fury, five star, 11 mil. Nick Fury, six star, 35 mil. Five star Kate Bishop, 48 mil. And six star Kate Bishop, 260 mil. A very much good luck to everybody that's grinding in the round two. I still need to make that decision if I am doing round two of this. But do bear in mind, new content comes out on Wednesday. And I have to literally divert a good chunk of time in order to cover that. So I need to think about how much I can realistically do um, in the time frame. In any case, let's end by saying thank you very much to everyone that supports the channel as a YouTube member and as a patron. You're on screen right now. Much love to you as always. And also for those that support on twitch.tv slash richthemanlive. Got a full week of uh, live streaming uh, goodness this week. I should be doing a lot more MCOC. I'm definitely going to be doing a lot more incursions and um, finishing off that. Uh, before ending the week out with uh, a little bit of event questing and some battlegrounds because I am massively behind, uh, but I am trying to get a new house. So that's that's causing a lot of... And my tax return this week. So there's a lot of stuff going on in any case. Go and check out some other content which is located on screen right now and I'll see you all very soon. Much love and goodbye everybody.